Yo, it's Riker. What is up, you amazing, beautiful people? I hope you're doing well wherever you are at. Whatever time of day or night you're doing to watch in this video, because in today's video, I will be reviewing the Jagdpanzer E100, the Tier 10 German Super Heavy DD. So without further ado, let's jump right into the stats of this vehicle. So right away, for the survivability of this tank, you have 2,000 hit points, which is honestly very good, because I think most Tier 10 TDs are around like the 1,800, 1,900 hit point range. So this is sitting at 2,000, and that is very good. For the main armor, for the front of the hull, it is 200, for the sides of the hull, 120, and for the rear, it is 150. The armor is very good on this tank, but I will say right now, there is a skill gap for playing this tank, and if you don't know how to play it, the armor is not going to mean anything, and you will be deleted from the game. So we will go more over that in the armor inspector part of this video, and in the replays. I hope I will demonstrate how to effectively play the tank. Chance of fire when the engine is hit is only 15%, so that is pretty decent the view range is 264 which is very good well not very good it's pretty good and you can work with it you could probably spot heavy tanks around the same time that they spot you or if not a little bit sooner i could be wrong on that but the view range has not let me down yet and it is very good in my opinion the concealment is not the best on this tank since this tank is pretty big but it is workable at some times but overall, I would not rely on the concealment for this tank. I would mainly play this tank as a frontline TD and only as a backline TD in certain situations. For the fire of this tank, the damage per minute is almost at 3,000 and you can get it to 3,000 through the provisions and the equipment. The reload time is 16.9 seconds, so it's not the longest, but it's not the shortest. It, so you're definitely going to have to either rely on your team or make sure no enemy is going to bum rush you after you take the shot. For the average penetration for the AP, you have 314, for the high explosive anti-tank 418, and for high explosive 94, which is very good in my opinion. You can pin most, if not every single tank at tier 10. And for the average damage for the AP, it is 800, but I have gotten high rolls in the 1000 range. For the high explosive anti-tank, you have 680, and for high explosive, 1200, which is very good in my opinion. For the aiming time, it is 5.5 seconds. It is pretty long, I will be honest, but in the gameplay, it doesn't really affect me, and you guys could obviously lower that quite a bit to like the 4.5-ish range or 4.4-ish range in the equipment and the provisions. I know I will obviously show you guys that later in this review. But overall, have not really had a, too much of a problem with the aiming time, and the dispersion is not that bad in my opinion. And for the gun trim limit, for the gun elevation you have 17 degrees, and for the gun depression you have 6 degrees. So obviously not the best gun depression, but it is workable in certain situations, and it's not the absolute worst, but it's obviously not the absolute best. And for the gun turn limit, going left and right, since this tank does not have a turret, so pretty much if you want to go left or right, you have to move your hull the most of the time. But there's that little amount of degrees of space that you could only move your gun without turning your hull, and that is 12 degrees to both left and right. And for the maneuverability of this tank, it's not like T62A or AMX50B speed, it is nowhere close to that. But it is not as slow as the E3 or T95, it is actually a in between it's pretty decent but it's not the absolute best but it's not the absolute worst either just skimming through it going forward 30 kilometers an hour in reverse 12 i will say in the reverse 12 is pretty bad so you don't want to get caught in out in the open too much unless you intend on being a frontline tank and you're willing to you know take the hits or bounce the tank as long as you know how to play the tank Hopefully that made sense. I am so sorry. <laughs> and honestly, I haven't really had too much of a problem with mobility. It's it's pretty good, and I don't really have too many complaints about it. And for the equipment, you guys could already see I am running calibrated shells. You guys might be wondering, why would you do that? This tank already has pretty good penetration. Why aren't you running gun rammer and getting the damage per minute up to 3,000? And that is very tempting to do, but... The main reason why I went calibrated shells is for the high explosive so I could HE the sides of some tanks if not most tanks at tier 10. Just doing that 1200 plus damage more reliably and obviously I'll be able to hit the rear but it's mainly for the sides of those tier 10 tanks. This is just my personal opinion and you guys could obviously run whatever you want this is just what I'm personally running right now. And for the rest of the equipment, I would go for defense systems if I did go for it, just to make everything a little bit more durable. 
don't waste your time on the camo net. This tank is already big enough and the camo rating already sucks. So you'll just be wasting credits putting it on camo net. If I were to choose this, I would go for improved optics and boost that view range. And then for this one, supercharged, I do not feel is needed at all on this tank. However, the aiming time does need to go down in my opinion. So I went for enhanced gun lane drive, or I would since I don't have it unlocked yet. And honestly, this could go 50-50 for you guys. You guys could go for improved assembly, get that 120 more hit points, or go for enhanced armor. And honestly, I might go for enhanced armor if I were to unlock them right now. And for this one, I would not go for improved control. Even though this tank might need it, I would not go for it personally. I would go for an engine accelerator as it boosts everything in mobility a little bit. And then for this one, vertical stabilizer, like I said for above, just get that view range down and get snapshots off. And this tank does need to reduce that aiming time. And also, I do not feel like refined gun is needed on this tank. And these last two, it's up to you guys. I just personally feel like consumable delivery system and enhanced tracks are not really worth it at all. I would go for toolbox and high-end consumables. For the ammunition, I run 9 AP, 5 heat, and 10 high explosive. High explosive mainly because this is the second biggest gun in the game. So you could obviously get that insane damage out. As you can see right there, it says 1,500 damage, which is freaking insane for a high roll. If you pin that, the enemy's just destroyed. Like, they're out of the game. And then I ran 5 heat, so I confirmed the shots that I need to confirm, confirm the kill on the tank, and just those shots that really are crucial and matter in the battle. And then AP, that's the standard ammunition that you're going to be running and mainly be using. And then for the provisions, I ran chocolate and the chocolate bar, mainly to boost a little bit of everything on the tank from the damage per minute to haul turn rate. Just everything gets improved slightly um, for both of them. And pretty much the same reason for improved fuel, just everything in mobility is being increased by a little bit. And for consumables, I run the multi-purpose restoration pack. It's self-explanatory why I run that. And I run the adrenaline so I can get one, possibly two more shots out quicker if I'm brawling with an enemy or if I just need to get those shots out. And for the last one, I run an engine power boost because this tank is already slow as it is. So you might as well run this, get that extra speed boost, get to positions quicker and faster than your enemy can. And also, if an enemy is able to circle you, you could activate that, get your back into cover, and turn your gun over to face them. It is very crucial for those situations and can mean the win or loss of a battle. And that will do it for this part of the review. I'm going to hop into Armor Inspector, show you guys this armor. It is very thick, but if you don't know how to angle it or play this tank, you will just get decimated and destroyed. And I'll show you what I mean. So head on. I could easily pin the lower plate, no problem. If I really wanted to, I could pin the cupola. If I load premium ammunition, I could easily pin the cheeks of this tank. And you might be thinking, you said this was thick armor. Why are you saying you could pin everything on this tank pretty much? Well, that's because this is where the skill gap comes in. If you just face an enemy head on like this and you don't angle or wiggle at all, you're going to get deleted from the game in like two seconds. What you need to do is angle or hide the lower plate and angle your cheeks. Because if I move this over, I... I could have a chance of bouncing this and not even pinning the lower plate. The upper plate, I have no chance of pinning that. The gun mantlet, no chance. This right here, no chance. The cheeks, I cannot pin anymore. The side, I cannot pin anymore. Pretty much this entire tank, I cannot pin anymore unless I really wanted to shoot this cupola. That is the only spot I could shoot. And that's what I mean when the skill gap comes in. You really have to know how to side scrape and how to angle in order to play this tank super effectively and on the front line at that know how to wiggle and everything so that is where the skill gap comes in if you guys do not know how to play this tank you will just easily get deleted and think this is the worst tank in the game but like i said already this tank has super thick armor and you could definitely work with it because it is very good armor as long as you guys know how, what you're doing and how to play this tank as you can see right there 230 290 and you are not pinning that gun mantle at all and on the side 159 and then there's that side skirt i believe it's to block heat but let me know down in the comment section below if that is true or not and if you angle it it increases to 336 which is honestly insane nobody is going to pin that if you angle it and the back side 150 141 so already the back side is super thick and if for some reason you have to angle it 
it goes up to like 360, 471. And this side is pretty much the same as the other side, so you guys don't really need to see that. But as you guys could see, this tank has super thick and effective armor as long as you guys know how to use it properly. And you could use it as a super aggressive frontline TD, like how I like to play it. And you guys will see in the replays I have for you. And I will tell you guys how to play and how to play it super effectively. So without further ado, let's start these replays. In this replay right here is going to mainly show you guys how to actually angle the armor side scrape and be super aggressive but effective in the tank. And that is a theme throughout the three replays I have for you guys. And the last one is going to be the OP Yak Panzer E100 replay that you guys have probably seen before. But if not, it is at the end of this video. And overall, all these gameplays, like I said, should show you guys how to side scrape, angle your armor, and just how to play this tank very effectively. And if you are a very aggressive player like I am, hopefully it will teach you guys a few things on that as well as I am very aggressive in this tank. And in pretty much every tank at that, only a few I am very passive in. And I decided to push on the left hand side of this map, push into the ruins area. I don't really come over to this area that much. I honestly think it is a very bad death trap. So I do not really recommend pushing in this area, especially in like a Jagdpanzer E100. That's just my personal preference. But for some reason, I want a new scenery or something. So I pushed over here. And right here, I start angling and being super aggressive. I'm right here out in the open and pretty much everyone who has a line of sight on me over there by base A or even that town area right to my left could get shots on me, but I am angling. So hopefully they cannot. And I did get spotted, so I was waiting for incoming shells, but nothing happened. I'm just waiting to see if anybody's going to take a shot at me, but nobody is. So I decided to push up, get caught on the wall, reposition, pull out. But there's an E50M. He's going to pull out, gets a shot into me, but I get a better shot into him. And that was a super bad trade for him. And he's already passed half of his hit points towards like the first two minutes and a half of this battle. And he is already a one shot for my entire team. And nobody on my team, well, that's a lie, but... My E50M just got deleted from the game. I didn't even notice he was out there, but he's gone. But their E50M is gone, so that is very good as well. And I'm still pushing up because I need shots. I'm the type of player, if I have shots, I'll stay put. But if I don't have shots, I will push up. Or if the situation calls for it, I'll push up anyways. But right there, like I was saying, wiggling and angling your armor when you are pushing up, like I did right there, that little wiggle while I was driving up. And I am pulling out at an angle, side scraping. Get a shot into him and he bounced me on the track. Nobody can really pin you if you pull out at an angle like this. And that 12 degrees of gun, I don't know what you would call it, but the 12 degrees you could go with your gun to the left really does help out in that when you pull out for a side scraping position and get shots off. But the ML2 does track the M103 in place. I get a nasty shot into him and the ML2 finishes him off, but the Ho Reed does push up. So I'm trying to angle my armor because I'm not quite sure if he has a shot on me, but his shell goes wide from both me and the ML2. And we end up capping out base, which is this base A, yep. So I push up. I know he's pretty much a one shot for me unless I low roll a lot. So I just delete him from the game. Keep an eye on that enemy EI Panzer E100 because I know how deadly that shell is and I do not want to get hit by him. And the Sheridan looks like Wait, that's not the Sheridan, the Conqueror, my bad. Looks like the Conqueror is dealing with the ISA on my team, so hopefully they could take him out. But there's an AFK E100, so I figure I'd just farm some damage from him, along with the e the Object 268, pardon. <laughs> I believe I get two or three shots into him before somebody takes him out of the game. Yeah, I think this is the last, yeah, this is definitely the last shot I take into him. Just delete him from the game, but as soon as I do, the enemy Yagpanzer E100 gets a nasty shot into me, and at this point, I realized that we are about to win on cap points. I did not realize that until right now. So I try to rush in there towards the Panzer E100, get one more shot off, but our team takes out the enemy Conqueror, which we do win, but I would have wished to get at least one more shot off to get over that 5,000 damage mark. But we end up getting first class, 4,800 damage, decent credits. You don't really play tier 10 for the credits unless it's a premium or sometimes a collectible, and we get two tanks destroyed, and we are on top of battle for this. I mean, top on... Ugh. What I meant to say is that we are on top of leaderboard for this battle, and hopefully in that battle, it really showed you guys how you could play the Jagdpanzer E100 super aggressive angle and wiggle while you're pushing up at the same time. And in this battle, it will demonstrate the same exact thing, being super aggressive on the front line. It's not like before where I was like kind of on the front line. Well, I pretty much was, but this is like right on the front line, like there's enemies 
all in front of me, basically the entire enemy team, and I'm bouncing shots left and right and dishing out the damage. So this battle will perfectly demonstrate how to play super effectively on the front line in the Yag Panzer E100, and I did make a separate video for this battle alone because I thought it was just that good. I think I called it uh, how to play the Yag Panzer E100 super aggressively. And we are pushing the left hand side. I feel like this is the main area on this map where you battle out. Sometimes base A and B, but for the most part, it always happens at base C. And if your mediums do not push over to that area over there where the T62A is at, you guys will most likely lose the battle. But I'll go ahead and make a map guide for this map sometime in the future. But we are pushing up right now. And I'm going to go ahead just above this canal area, but we are going to be in it. So I'm just going to classify it as going into the canal. We do get a shot into that E5. He did push up super aggressive and just got caught out in the open. And my teammate did get another shot into him. And I am aiming in, seeing if I could get one more shot into him. And there we go. We get one more through the roof of his tank. I did get hit from the right hand side. I went and checked and my team did handle him, taking him out of the game. But now I'm ba backing up. I saw that the AMX 50B was aiming at me. So I angled my tank, got a block, and now I'm aiming in. I'm willing to take the hits now because I'm going to dish out 1,157 damage to him. And he is going to run away because he does not want to get hit by me again. Because if I do manage to high roll, that's a one shot for me. But there's the Vickers. I I didn't want to waste a shell on him, but I ended up having to. So I switch up to HE just to splash him. I didn't really even have to aim in. Just splash anywhere around him and he would have been destroyed. And that turret just went flying. And I love that War Gaming did add that feature to the game. It just spices up the game a little bit. But there's the E100. I am going to focus him. Get a shot into the side of him doing 844 damage. Keep an eye on that E5 because I honestly expected him to be out of the game by now. So I load HE. Was about to pull up on him. But my team managed to take him out. But there's the Grill 15. I, I'm trying to focus him. Trying to get a shot into him. Just dealing that 1000 plus damage. But my teammates do get a shot into him. And I'm kind of just not interested in him anymore because i just wanted that thousand plus damage shot and there's the e100 i thought my team had him so i did push up but he was not being taken out of the game and i was like is7 what are you doing pulled back to make sure he would have taken him out and he was so i push up and i just delete that 183 in one shot had no chance i just came around the corner and snapped a shell off and he was deleted just gone and I think the Grill 15 is going to commit suicide over by the water. He's just going to drive in the water and destroy himself. Yep, right there. He just destroyed him. <laughs> he destroyed himself and we took out the last enemy tank. That is what I was trying to say. There we go. We get the first class. 4,600 damage. Okay-ish credits again. Not the best. You don't really play tier 10 for the credits and two tanks destroyed. And overall, I hope that battle really did show you guys how I play this tank just right up on the front line in the enemy's face. Like, hey, here I am, and you can't really pin me at all, but I can do sometimes a thousand plus damage to you. And we are on top of the leaderboard for that battle. But overall, I do really like that game, and I feel like it really showcased how to be on the front line in this tank. And this is going to be the OP replay. And it will just show you towards the end of this battle that this tank can carry teams very heavily as i do over six thousand damage i believe if i'm remembering correct correctly and i get five kills so yeah i do believe this tank is very good and worth the grind through all the pain and suffering well there wasn't really any pain and suffering on the grind unless you were stuck with the stack tanks for a while then that kind of sucked but overall the grind was not that bad and if you guys want me to do a tech tree showcase just get a battle in each of the tanks for the entire tech tree for the yak panzer e100 just kind of talk about each tank and if you guys should just free xp your way through it or just grind it out because it's not that bad of a tank and which ones you should keep or not but anyways that's a completely different topic let's get into this battle so i did get into this td position if anybody did push up on my conqueror i could get a shot into him and i was wanting to be super aggressive there but my team over by base a did spot the progetto so i'm going to try to get some shots to him and su support them so i'm just aiming in waiting for him to push up a little too far or back up but he is unspotted but he is respotted so now i see my opportunity aim in take a shot and it hits him right in the back of the turret doing 687 and that kind of looked like heat i'm not sure if i fired my heat but i am on ap right now 
waiting for the reload and seeing if I could get one more shot into him to really help out our medium tanks over there. He's pushing up, take a blind shot, and I am not sure if that went through, but we do get the knocked out. And yes, it did go through. It said 1,000 plus damage dealt. So we did get a blind shot into the enemy team. Seeing if I could get a shot on him. Any more enemies over by base, eh? but I cannot. And there's the crown wagon over here pushing my conqueror so i decided to start pushing up supporting him scaring off the crown wagon i take a shot but it just hits the ground so i am angling and doing the wiggle technique that i told you guys about right there just wiggling the tank and angling it and they cannot penetrate you at all like that crown wagon did just bounce me and our conqueror is one shot so i'm not quite sure why he is pushing up he's still behind cover but i do not want him rushing out into the open as he is one shot and i may need him in the future of this battle and he's in my way so i told him negative he moves out of the way which thank you for doing that and the crown wagon is at 877 damp i mean hp but the ml2 gets shot to him so i decide to load he get a hit from the object i believe but i ignore it push up and finish off the crown wagon and yes it was the object 268 in Bushka's office. That is a very effective spot. So I decided to push up, load AP, and maybe see if I could get a shot into him. But as soon as I saw him aiming at me, I snapped my tank to the side into an angled position so he could not get any shots into me and they would just automatically bounce. But I see a shot for the waffle tractor in base B. Load AG and do 1,200 plus damage. I'm going to definitely use that for a derp compilation that I'm going to be making very soon but i am realizing that i am stuck out in the open i need a backup to cover since we're about to lose our td our last td besides me the 183 is now deleted from the game and it is a 2v4 situation right now so i did back up i thought about pushing up but i realized that was a stupid idea to do so i start backing up again not trying to push out in the open make any bad plays because this is a very bad situation that we're in I figured the object was in Bushka's office and he's going to be flanking around us. And I figured I should deal with him while the ML2 holds this flank in case anybody decides to rush us like that enemy light tank. And what did I tell you guys? There's the object 268 rushing in. Get a shot at him. Angle my tank. He bounces us. And that is how you want to angle the tank. As soon as you think an enemy is about to fire on you, just angle it to the side and they will bounce you. But I did not realize that Object 268 had that fast of a reload. He gets one shot, one more shot into me before I end up taking him out of the game. And there's the enemy light tank, so I decided to focus him next since he is the closest target. And I need to help out my ML2 before he gets another shot into him. So I snap out. Obviously, I go ahead and side scrape out first. And then I snap my gun towards him and take him out of the game before he even has a chance to take another shot into me but the t57 heavy does take out our ml2 which is very bad because the t57 heavy is at least a two shot for me but the waffle tractor is a one shot so i snap around get a shot into him obviously i aim in a little bit because i do not want to risk having the shot go wide and he is taken out of the game i was also a little afraid at the time that he was going to be able to pin my cheeks on the front of the tank but there's the t57 heavy and I got to play super efficiently. I am angling the lower plate. He gets a bounce and I snap the shot, the gun around and get a shot into him, lowering him down to a definite one shot. And the enemy team does have two bases captured. And I, if I wait any longer, they can win on base capture points. So I have to be super aggressive, but also play very smart at the same time. So I load HE because I know if I hit him or very close around him, it, it will most likely just take him out of the game. So I reverse, he hits the house and I just delete him from the game. So we do end up clutching the game, getting the win obviously, and this is going to be the mastery game for this tank. Doing just over 6,000 damage at 6,066. And again, roughly the same amount of credits that we have make, been making throughout the entire replays that we have seen, around 19 to 20,000 credits which obviously isn't the best, but it's not the absolute worst. And we get five tanks destroyed. And there we go. We are on top of the leaderboard. And I gave that ML2 an effective player for watching my back while I was dealing with that object. But do I think that the Jagdpanzer E100 is worth the grind? Yes, I do believe so. I think it is one of the best TDs, if not the best one, with the biggest gun at tier 10. Yes, I do believe this is better than the 183, the Death Star. Death Star does have more alpha just by a little bit though, and it has no armor at all. While this tank 
has the armor and it has the alpha obviously not as much just a little bit less but it could still get those thousand damage shots just on the ap alone so yes i do believe this is one of the best tds at tier 10 as long as you guys do know how to play this tank effectively obviously it is going to take some time to learn the tank and how to play it but once you do it is godlike and you carry teams just like in this battle so overall yes go ahead and grind this tank it is so good and if you guys haven't played in a while go ahead and take it out and use some of the tips that you learned from this video and with that being said i do hope you guys learned something from this video whether it's from the stats or from the how to play section of this video so if you did enjoy smash that like button leave a comment your favorite part of the video or anything in general down in the comment section below subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're always notified when i upload a new video with that being said i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one how does it feel to breathe on your dead? They've never seen you.